In today's episode, we're going to be discussing the psychological themes found in Jordan Peele's phenomenal film, Us. We're going to be exploring the psychology of dualism. Specifically, we're going to look at classism and the impact of affluence or poverty. We're going to be exploring the concept of masks and an inner and outer world or presentation. And third, we're going to talk about the internal or external locus of control, specifically how it relates to people taking responsibility. I'm Jonathan Hederly, a licensed professional counselor, and this is Psych Cinema. Psych Cinema is Shrink Tank's video series where I explore the psychological themes found in the films that I watch and love. With Jordan Peele's Us, we follow a family of four as they get terrorized on vacation by their exact doppelgangers. But let's specifically look at some of the psychological themes found in dualism or duality. Because doppelganger literally means ghostly double. And this film, before we dive in, uh, there are major spoilers. It's hard to talk about the psychology in this film without giving away spoilers. So if you're one of the few people that haven't seen us yet, pause this video, go see it, come back, watch this video, and then go see it again, as I plan to do myself. So when we talk about dualism, dualism in a lot of ways signifies something that's having two parts. Uh, I use the concept of two sides of the same coin often in my therapy sessions with my clients because it's looking at oftentimes two things that are separate but have some type of relationship or connection to one another. So whether we talk about the duality of man in terms of the capacity for both good and evil, if we look at other concepts like Carl Jung talked about how the mind over the body and there, there was a dual duality relationship with that. Um, and so, and with those, and we see this in the film, there's a key concept of connectivity between these two um, separate uh, entities or, or concepts. And in the film, us, they use the term tethered. And so one of the big spoilers of us is not that there is a, a a doppelganger family of our protagonists, but that every single person in America has a doppelganger and that there is an entire population of tethered people that have been living underground. What are you people? We're Americans. So thematically, when we look at the psychological concepts with this film, the first thing that sort of arrives is this idea of classism. You have literally an upper class of people and a lower class of people. And when we think about that and you look at the film with the tethered folks, they lack agency. You see throughout the film, they behaviorally mimic their doppelgangers or their, their, their replicants up above the surface. They lack language. Uh, they're just sort of behaviorally controlled by the actions of, of what's happening above the surface. And yet they know, um, because of the protagonist, Adelaide, they know that they have a duplicate up above. And so in a lot of ways, we think about when it comes to affluence and privilege versus poverty, um, when it comes to classism, is oftentimes the lower class is very aware and even dependent at times of the decisions of the upper class and those with power and affluence. But as we see um, thematically in this film, is that those that are above, those that are above the poverty line, those that are very affluent or fortunate or have circumstances working for them, more often than not, they are completely oblivious to those that are living with a, a life or means beneath them because they're so preoccupied by their own comings and goings because their lifestyle has, has afforded them that ability to neglect or forget or not pay attention. And so when you think about, from a psychological standpoint, how that can really shape a person's outlook on their life, someone with affluence and privilege, what they might deem as struggles and sometimes the difficulty that they might have with empathy and really understanding the plight of people with less fortunate circumstances. It's also really easy to, to consider the, the, the tethered, the people living beneath the, the, um, the underclass, how they can easily also be both seduced or obsessed, envious or jealous of the upper class and again have their focus so fixated on that. Um, and so when you think about, 
Again, dualism, you have this upper and then this lower when it comes to class systems uh, with these uh, doppelganger, the, the tethers that live beneath the surface, literally live beneath the surface of America. And then you think about when it comes to dualism, this concept of masks. And so masks, instead of the class system of upper and lower, now we're looking at outward and inward. And we see this really represented in a number of different ways in this film. First and foremost would just be the youngest son and then his doppelganger. Both of them wear masks. So then you have sort of a literal mask that they both see as protection and as a shield, but it also um, it shields the audience from sort of seeing their, their expressions and their nonverbals. And when the doppelganger, um, youngest child, removes his mask, you see that he is very badly scarred and, and disfigured with about half of his face. But then we want to talk about how masks or outward and inward really represents oftentimes a shallow, superficial presentation versus what's going on more more inward. So again, it can be like the upper and lower on the surface versus depth. We see this in a couple of things. First and foremost, thematically, this film really touches upon um, the 80s theme and the specific 1986 event, Hands Across America, where it was designed by celebrities and affluent people that a way to show unity and a way to draw attention to the homeless and the impoverished was to literally have every American hold hands from one coast to another, representing this great sort of um, altruistic gesture to bring attention to the plight of those less fortunate. And for, for those that were, were aware of it, um, or even those that weren't aware of it, Hands Across America, is, I think, is a textbook example of something that on the surface really represents or looks noble, um, admirable, but the question is, did it really make a significant impact to the larger systemic issues at play, whether it be, whether it be poverty or homelessness? I'd probably argue it didn't. So again, you have this sort of shallow, superficial, external a mask versus the depth, and oftentimes a lot of charitable actions are really mo mostly for show and really um, they really don't make a lot of sustainable, impactful change. So then again, you have this mask, this idea of outward inner, shallow versus superficial. Um, and then there, in the film, there's also a lot of um, imagery or uh, alluding to Michael Jackson. And so you have uh, young Adelaide, the protagonist, wearing a Thriller t-shirt. Um, and again, based upon what we know about the film, and I'm going to go into some deep spoilers here, uh, all of the tethered people, when they rise up, they're all wearing red jumpsuits. They're all wearing one glove, similar to what Michael Jackson did in terms of the height of his popularity in the 80s after Thriller and right before Bad. Um, and Jordan Peele has actually gone on record talking about how Michael Jackson um, illustrates a, a perfect example of somebody that has an external or internal in terms of like he has an image and persona, especially in the, the mid 80s, whereas we learn more and more about the complexity of his internal life and things that maybe were not as uh, prevalent or known to the outside world. But here is the final in terms of masks. And this is a big spoiler because we learn at the very end of the film that Adelaide is actually her doppelganger. And that early in the film, um, she is kidnapped by her doppelganger and her doppelganger takes over her life. And so you have throughout this film, this idea of somebody presenting, although there's question as how much she actually is aware of and she remembers versus how much she has suppressed and lost that memory. But at the end, the film ends with her smiling, giving the audience the recognition that she has become aware that um, she in fact is not the true Adelaide. She is the doppelganger that hijacked her life when she was young. And so then you think about this classism, you think about this external, internal masks. So let's talk about this idea of locus of control or personal responsibility. Because Jordan Peele is tackling a lot of themes about the state of America or even the origins of America. You see throughout the film, Jeremiah 1111, which is a Bible verse where God gives the nation of Israel land. But 
they basically break his laws and his covenant and he tells them that he's going to bring upon judgment and wrath to them that they cannot avoid. And so this film really, when you think about the beneath the ground, the underground railroad, you think about slavery, you think about even the origins of America is actually the land of the Native Americans. This idea of personal responsibility and external um, internal locus of control. Um, it, it really questions who really is the protagonist and who's the villain here. Because when it's an external locus of control, we look to blame other people. In fact, we're at a point in our nation where we're looking to blame immigrants or race relations and all these other things where Jordan Peele's film is really provocative in that it's saying, well, look at yourself. In fact, the son, he swears in the film, the dad basically calls him out and the son basically says, well, when you point at me, there's three fingers pointing back at you. This idea of instead of looking externally for reasons or blame uh, or scapegoats, look internally to our own role in being complicit to whatever misery or problems that our culture faces. Because at the end, the film asks, who really is the villain and the protagonist here? And with the last minute um, kind of surprise of Adelaide's true, true nature, it asks us, who are we sympathetic to and who have we really been rooting for? Now, this film is ripe with metaphors and the ability to interpret this in several different ways. So I'm curious to hear from you what metaphors, what symbolism, what imagery did you take out of us? Did you pick up on this concept of classism or dualism or is there something else that you really think Jordan Peele, Peele's film is trying to convey to the audience? So be sure to leave comments below. Also, you're always welcome to recommend a film you'd like for me to, to tackle here on Psych Cinema. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you're interested in more content that explores the intersection of psychology and pop culture, check out shrinktank.com where you'll find articles, videos, podcasts, polls, and more that look at film and entertainment through the rich lens of psychology. That's going to do it for this episode of Psych Cinema. I'm Jonathan Hederly. We'll see you soon at the movies. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. <laughs>